Hi, this is Tim Kretschmann with the East Coast Horror Group, and on the other side of the Skype line, we have Jenna Sims, who has been making quite a few movies lately. Hello, Jenna. Hi. Hey, now where are we calling you tonight? I am on the West Coast in my lovely Los Angeles apartment. <laughs> there you go. Fantastic. Now, how did you get started in horror movies? You know, that was the first audition that I landed. Um, well, actually, yeah, I was. I auditioned for, I guess, a television show in the horror genre, which is The Vampire Diaries. I guess it's kind of borderline horror. Right. It has its moments. Um, and I booked that, and then the first film that I actually booked was Attack of the 50-Foot Cheerleader, which is also in that genre, which is Roger Corman, kind of like the king of B-horror and B-comedy. Right. So it kind of found me, I guess. Yeah, and now Attack of the 50-Foot Cheerleader, you were working with uh, the Roger Corman's company, but I believe it was made directly for Epix uh, yeah, channel, right? it was right? produced by Roger Corman, but Epix was the distribution. Now, it's obviously a takeoff of Attack of the 50-Foot Woman from... Yes, I can show you something, actually. Since okay. Home. I have the original artwork... Um, for the film in my kitchen. Thank goodness my apartment's clean right now. This is because my mom's coming to town. Um, <laughs> uh, Attack of the 50 Foot Woman. Do you want to flip this thing? Yeah. This there is the original artwork for the first cover of Attack of the 50 Foot Woman. Um, wow. Someone gave that to me as a gift whenever 50 Foot Cheerleader came out. So, yeah. <laughs> that is incredible. That is <laughs> awesome. Now, did you see the movie prior to uh, booking Cheerleader? Or? I did. I, w I watched it a lot. I watched all the versions. And then I have mine, too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> I have an autographed version of that, actually, oh, downstairs. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> I watched it. Um, I mean, it's kind of different because mine is set sort of in college and 50 foot woman is it's a little bit different plot line wise but it's always nice to study up and you know watch those movies because i respect daryl hannah so much and it was a good find fantastic now, i believe right now you're working on minutes to midnight where is that one in the pipeline i i'm just destroying my apartment um <laughs> minutes to midnight uh is completed um but I, we're just waiting on it to come out it's by um, Deinstitutionalized, which um, also did Three-Headed Shark Attack that I was in last year. Um, but Minutes to Midnight, it should be out any day now. I mean, to be determined, it's kind of like a New Year's Eve slasher movie. Okay, and Three-Headed Shark Attack, since you brought it up. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I hear that uh, it took a long time for them to find an actual three-headed shark, let alone train it. Were you involved in that process? Yeah, I mean, I thought my audition process was uh, strenuous. Um, yeah, I guess, well, truth be told, <laughs> they did actually make a three-headed shark puppet yeah. that I have some awesome pictures inside of, but we didn't actually shoot with it at all, which kind of stinks because they probably spent a lot of money. More money than they paid me um, <laughs> on the shark um, that didn't even get used. They ended up doing um, CGI for the whole thing, which turned out probably better because it's it's cool looking. They did a really good job with the CGI and all the graphics. That's great. Now, it also, uh, one of the fan favorites of people at East Coast Horror Group is Danny Trejo's involved in that. Oh, Machete. Yeah, he's really sweet. He's really, really sweet and humble. I didn't actually get to meet him, but because okay. we left, literally, we just missed each other. Um, but everybody said he was really cool and really nice. and He kind of owned that role that he played, which is sort of like a play on all the roles that he does. Like, he wasn't, right. you know, complaining about it. Like, he just kind of owns it and does it. Fantastic. Now, you you've actually have shared screen time with some some pretty heavy hitters. I remember you were in Las Vegas. Yes, uh, which was. had Michael Douglas and Robert De Niro, Kevin Klein, and Morgan Freeman. I think I caught the big four there. Uh, and he actually yeah, yeah. shared screen time with, I think it was De Niro, right? Uh, with Morgan Freeman. With Morgan. Um, okay. I had more material, but it got cut from that film, which is right. kind of hard to compete with four or five Oscar winners. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, we did overshoot. There's so much um, scripted pages that didn't make the final cut, and that's just a part of the business. Um, 
But yeah, what did make the cut was a nice little scene I had with uh, Morgan Freeman just kind of talking me up and convincing a different character to ask me out. And it was a nice moment. Morgan, all of them, I got to spend like three weeks with them in Atlanta um, on set. Like I was, since I was technically on their level as a, a build actor, um, I got to be like, you know, we were all in the same green room. Like we all had lunch together, dinner and breakfast and second meal. And, we all hung out every day, so despite the little screen time, I did get a lot of time with them. Well, that's fantastic. Now, I also want to bring out, you still do quite a bit of charitable work. You want to tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> um, yeah, I've had my charity, The Pageant of Hope, for like 11, 12 years now. Yeah, 12 years now, wow. Um, my whole pageant's for kids with terminally ill diseases and kids with special needs where everyone leaves a winner um, it's building self-esteem, raising self-confidence among kids who need it most. Um, I'm a former pageant winner myself, so I just like passing on that winning feeling to those kids. And I've been all over the world, Bahamas, Jamaica, Cuba, Australia, Africa twice. Um, and of course, I've held events here in the States. Um, raising money right now to go back to the Bahamas and maybe an event in Guatemala coming up at the end of the year. It just depends on how much money I can raise. Fantastic. Now, where can people find out more about you and what you have coming up and all that? Should they go out to the website? Sure. I mean, jennasims.com, J-E-N-A-S-I-M-S, -S, um, is my website. Uh, there's my, a link to my charity stuff, um, all my work, and then social media is probably the most up-to-date <laughs> uh, sure. version or a way to keep in touch with me. All of my Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, that's probably the best way, but website's always good, especially if you want to donate. Um, my Instagram is uh, and Twitter, J-E-N-A-M, for my middle initial, uh, Sims, S-I-M-S, -S, and then my Snapchat is Rainbow Savage. <laughs> okay. Where did Rainbow Savage come from? <laughs> a friend of mine gave it to me. Initially, my Snapchat was private, but now that it's sort of like a business uh, venture for me. It's right. now public and I get asked that question a lot. I mean, so Rainbow Savage is, came from a late night hot tub conversation with a bunch of my friends all sitting around asking like what our stripper name would be or if we had to be a stripper. <laughs> so Rainbow Savage was mine and I, it just kind of stuck and I really like that name. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, what's your favorite horror movie? Ooh, I, you know, I've seen a lot here lately. Um, the new Poltergeist is really good. Um, Babadook was great. Uh, Insidious was, like, mind-blowing. I just saw Insidious 2, and I wore my Fitbit. I'm not wearing it now because I just got out of the shower. But I usually have my Fitbit on, and I kept it on when I watched Insidious 2. And it, my heart was just racing, like when like the scary, like in your face stuff happens. Mm -hmm. And I was so curious after the movie to watch to check my heart monitor thing on there. Yeah. And it was like shooting up and down, like I had had a workout. It was <laughs> so crazy. I actually put a screenshot of my of it on Twitter the other day because um, it was so unbelievable, like how the <laughs> changes in my heart rate from watching that movie. Um, but I guess all time. The first one I ever saw, probably Jeepers Creepers. Okay. That's because it's special. It's the first one, like my first memory of being scared from watching something on TV. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, something we like to ask at the end of each of these on Scream at the Screen is we would love to hear your best scream. Okay, well, okay. I, there's like a baby that lives next to me, so I can't <laughs> scream too loud because then the baby will start screaming. That's okay. Everybody at home, turn up the volume, and, and that'll that'll do it for us. So okay, I'll let's just it. give you a quick scream and hope nobody's home next door. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! Thank you so much, Jen. I appreciate welcome. your time today, and we wish you the best of luck and success. Thank you. Bye. East Coast Horror Group.